writers, agents, and publishers, for the first time since the Gutenberg Press, find themselves lost in a maze of mystery as technology alters the shape of the publishing industry. Searching for Answers is a group of writers throwing pop culture, writing, and publishing into a crucible of clarity, passion, and humor. This group is the Right Pack. Welcome back to Right Pack Radio. This is your host and the producer, David Allen Lucas. And today's mar- tips, or today's topic will be marketing tips. Um, normally we go around the table and introduce everybody first, but I want to do a quick announcement. By the time this episode airs, or shortly thereafter, a new website will be opened. I have put aside the attempts to get published in the traditional publishing industry as a novelist, mostly be- not because of them, but because of myself with time. And I have turned to perhaps one of my favorite, one of my loves that I've had since I was a child. I am opening up a company called Winding Trails Media. Winding Trails Media will be the host for Right Pack Radio. It will also be the host for a new show that will be coming out later this year called Winding Trails Theater. Now, why would you care? <laughs> Let's be honest, why would you care? Kind of looks the cabbage Wind- head right there. Right. Winding <laughs> Trails Theater will be a anthology audio play our audio drama theater for that will be posting episodes every week that will be written by people who you may know if you're interested in writing radio dramas maybe you can submit a script or be or also be radio dramas produced or rather sorry radio dramas written by people who have passed away and whose copyrights are now available. Um, Point blank, what I'm producing is literally a radio play channel. What is a radio play? Best way to do that, think old time radio dramas brought up to modern day. Imagine your story, if you write one in an audio play form, being acted out on air for others to hear and be and for the characters to come alive inside of their mi- of the listeners' minds. More information will be available as time goes on, but the new website will be literally www.windingtrailsmedia.com. Thea- uh, you can also, we'll be able to do rightpackradio.com or windingtrailstheater.com, and it would get you to the same location. And with that, today we are, today I'm... Honored to be surrounded by my panelists for Right Pack Radio. My co-host, Kathleen Cayembe, paranormal romance writer under the pen name Kaseka and Vita, and going to be gone for the second half of June and all of July. We will miss you. Why are you going to be gone? I'm going to Clarion, baby. I'm so excited. Woo-hoo! It's a sci-fi fantasy horror writing workshop, and it's going to be amazing. Uh, T.W. Finley is gone, and now it is my turn. <laughs> She's going on the trip with those with she's one going, ring that, that binds them all. Okay. She's going to cocoon for a portion of the summer and come back a beautiful butterfly. It's going to be amazing. She's already a beautiful butterfly. That is there true. we go. <laughs> going to be a beautiful butterfly with superpowers. <laughs> Who can write? Yeah. Also with us today right is <laughs> totally right now. Mm. What me next? Yes, you next. Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Jennifer <laughs> Stolzer. I'm a children's book author and illustrator. But our aim is, I write Victorian whodunits like Jack the Ripper in St. Louis and just released Mayhem at Buffalo Bill's Wild West, which got good reviews from Library Journal and from Yay. Historical Novels Review. Oh. Nice. Oh. Oh. Congrats. Thank you. Okay. I'm Melanie Claney, author of nonfiction and, and uh, science fiction fantasy. Lee Savage, uh, author of erotic romance. And under the pen name Carrie Lee Williams, Children's Stories. And I'd just like to remind everyone that you, there is still time to go to the Indie Book Fair here in St. Louis that will be at 1301 Olive Street, which is the main branch of the library. It will be May 7th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And I will be there with books. And you can come and say hi and bring them in to get autographed. There we go. Uh, Brad R. Cook. I am the author of steampunk novels and steampunk short stories and other things of fun nature. 
you can find them everywhere, uh, I hope, at least. And uh, they're under the Iron Chronicles. Or check them out at bradrcook.com. And with us today, we have a special guest. Probably one, what well, I'm considering a marketing guru <laughs> in St. Louis. And he has been on here before. He is a favorite. Bob Baker. Hi, I'm Bob Baker. It's great to be here. Congratulations on your new venture, David. Thank you. Uh, I am a, uh, an author and information publisher on the topics of music marketing, on book promotion, and also uh, empowerment for creative people of all types. What's the book you have in front of you? I have two books in front of me, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Mostly because I was thinking, well, just in case I need to do a little research on my and my own books. Uh, <laughs> two two of my resources specifically on book mar marketing. One's called Fifty Five Ways to Promote and Sell Your Book on the Internet. The other one's called The Gorilla Guide to Book Marketing. And so available on Amazon and wherever independent. I don't know. <laughs> and on my website and here, I guess, in this room today. <laughs> and we have a few nuggets of wisdom from your oh. books there. Well, we, 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 well, isn't that going to be the primary topic of the? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how to. I had to re re reveal nuggets this early in the show. I thought we were going to lead up to that. She, she's no. like, no, I'm going to put you on the spot. Like, no. Wow, wow, this is and not your first time here. I know. <laughs> While I am the producer, obviously I never have control. So, um, control no. is an illusion. Let's talk, let's oh, talk about. Let's let's break this down. Every writer, every new writer, if it comes to St. Louis Writers Guild. I would assume to Sisters in Crime, to St. Louis Publishers Association, yes. and so forth. One of the first questions out of their mouths usually is, especially if they've got a book already written, how do I get this into bookstores? How do I get people's attention with my book? Mm. Well, unfortunately, there's no really one great answer to this. And the roles of book, bookstores have changed, at least over the lifetimes of everybody who's sitting around this table and probably at your computer or however you listen to this podcast. Bookstores used to be the primary. I don't think that's necessarily anymore, at least not the big names. So let's talk about that. Okay, I have got a book. I wrote a book. It is published and I need to market it. When should I, when should I start marketing? Well, ideally, when you got the, had the idea for the book, yes. <laughs> it's really, it's really not, not that it's too late. That you're not sunk if, if you have a book out. It's okay. There are no, you know, no shame, no, no blame here. But ideally, yeah, you'd be stirring up some, uh, some, some uh, uh, exposure or some interest in it as you're creating it. And I know that's very different than the old model. And and you bring up a, bring up a good point. In the old days, yeah, people with their knee jerk reaction was, how do I get this in the bookstores? How do I get book reviews? Those are sort of like the the, the time you know that the old school things that a lot of people think of when they think about well, how does a book get marketed? I think those ideas are starting to fade away with all the you know the independent opportunities. But there's still this sort of like it's I think it's almost like built into our DNA. Okay. And I think and I think why that is is because we think of well who's my when, when you think of a successful author, quite often maybe it is a New York Times bestseller or Stephen King or somebody that you were inspired by. And, um, and so you think, well, how did I find out about them? Well, I saw them in a bookstore. And you think, well, that's the way I have to go. But I think as a lot of us know these days, there's so many more options. Yeah, yeah Bob is totally correct, actually. Uh, there is an older model and a yeah. newer model, I suppose. Uh, real quick, though, I want to throw out some resources that will be available by the time you're listening to this, <laughs> uh, which is we will have had probably Emily Hall from mm -hmm. Main Street Books at uh, St. Louis Writers, Writers Guild. Guild. If you were there on April, the first Saturday in April, because it's April total. the 2nd. Uh, uh, so if you were fact. there then, uh, you know, you probably heard all this. But if you're a St. Louis Writers Guild member, you'll probably be able to find an article about her, an interview with her, uh, fun stuff like that, maybe even the recording of her talk uh, on the website. So do check all that out if you want to know how to get into bookstores. Um, and then there's a ton of uh, resources online for how to market your book, both traditionally, mm -hmm. uh, getting into bookstores, getting into blog reviews, and a bunch of stuff that we're about to talk about, as well as kind of the more modern stuff using social media and things of that nature. Just throwing it out there. For Perfect. Everyone. And I do recommend Bob's book. I've read it a couple of times on 65 ways to promote and sell your book on the internet, that is a great source. Thank yes, you. you can find Bob's book on the internet. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> and on the table. Right? Yes, and on the table. And also to another book I've a book that I purchased a while back, I find has some great resources, is Beyond the Bookstore. 
How to Sell Your Books Profitably to Non-Bookstore Markets by Brian Judd. Mm -hmm. We're There's people here around this room who have books out and have done different things to market their books. Mm -hmm. Fedora, you had a book launch at Sisters in Crime. I know the books weren't there, unfortunately, but <laughs> you did the launch. <laughs> And well, I believe in doing lots of launches. Yes. I plan to do one yeah. in Sedalia and, and other places as well. Uh -huh. So well, tell me what some of the things you do to get your book out, book information out there. Well, <clears throat> that's one, one of the things that I did before I ever had a book that was out there to sell from any publisher at all was that I had a platform already. I do historical characters from Missouri mostly. I do Jesse Benton Fremont, I do Marguerite McNair, and I do some that are just made up and for fun. And I do those at uh, civic centers and historical societies. And I created kind of a network of places that I can send emails to announcing when I have something new out. And what they have in common typically is that they like history. And so that is the platform that I've developed, and it works way better for me than going to a bookstore for a signing. I do some bookstore signings because people ask me to, but uh, I do much better if I speak somewhere and then sell books afterwards. The sell books while you're speaking model is pretty much the only way anyone sells their nonfiction book nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, take your publish a book, take it with you to the speaking engagement you're already being paid for, hopefully, yes. and then sell it in the back of the room. Uh, that's the that's sort of the going way to especially if it's something uh, I helped my uh, uncle write a book about nonprofit governance and people are looking for books on nonprofit governance there's lots of books about uh, governing boardrooms and things so how do you set yours apart well you talk about it while you're giving your lecture your lecture is very interesting and then you say if you want to learn more if you want to take these ideas with you buy my book it's in the back of the room I would say the, a similar thing uh, goes for fiction as well. I'm going to pass it over to Brad after this. Uh, he just had a great event in which he spoke to <laughs> yeah. Steve fans yes, at the Science did. Center and awesome. had a lot of anxious people waiting in line in front of his book table afterwards because I anxious he people. was, he was <laughs> you know, demonstrating not only his knowledge of the field, but he was bringing people who already had an interest in steampunk to his books, which would appeal to people with an interest in steampunk. So this is true. <laughs> uh, first, to jump on your nonfiction thing. Yeah. Yes, that is the number one way you're going to sell your book as a nonfiction author is by doing events where you talk about the you know subject you do. Mm -hmm. In fact, that should be a major part of your platform mm -hmm. when you pitch the book in the mm -hmm. first place to a publisher. Is just how you're going to go around the country or your area or whatever <laughs> selling your book. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yes, I, I was at uh, uh, First Friday's Steampunk Science uh, at the St. Louis Writer or St. Louis Science Center. It was uh, actually a ton of fun. Uh, spoke to a huge uh, Omnimax theater stuffed with people, um, and I will say, uh, as a little thing, in my talk were the images that the lovely Jennifer Stolzer had uh, created. Let me tell you what a trip it is to see your artwork standing 20 feet tall. Yes. Especially when you weren't expecting it to be there. I was quite <laughs> delighted on the top floor of the bleachers of the Omnimax to suddenly have the Sparrowhawk bigger than I could ever imagine just there and me go, ah! Yes, and I have to say, seeing it, you know, something that came out of your imagination and uh, got put into a 20 foot tall rendering up above you. Uh, that was that was a joy for me, but I have to say I think that helped sell a bunch of books after the event. Yeah, um, because you know not only did I talk about my books and everything like that, but a lot of the people in line were there because not that they had come to see me, but they had come to see somebody speak about steampunk. Mm -hmm. They really liked what I had to say. They really liked the way I presented it. And they really wanted to read my book because I'd infuse some energy into wanting to read my books. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty about hand selling, uh, which we just did a whole thing yeah. at St. Louis Writers Guild about human fly fishing. Here. Yeah. Exactly. Real quick, and then I'm going to turn this over to Fedora. Um, as I'm glad, this is why I went to Fedora to start off, 
and Jen, you picked it up, and Brad picked it up, unscripted, fantastic. <laughs> Most of this is, is unscripted, in case the audience is, in case yeah. not, this whole thing's yeah, never scripted. We're completely flying by the seat of I our didn't pants. get a script. I yeah, am there, not there's no script. this line right the now. Cute, cute, cute. <laughs> okay, where I was going with that, though, is when you have an opportunity to speak somewhere, if you've got a book and so forth, it is normal for people in the audience to want to take a piece of your knowledge home with them. And that book, be it fiction, be it nonfiction, is a piece of you. It's, a, it's almost like a continuation of your speech mm -hmm. that you gave. They want that. So, if you, so that is one great way of doing that. Another thing is podcasts, like this. Blogs as well. But podcasts. If I, if I wrote a book... Um, nonfiction, and I had a podcast that was talking about that topic that can generate interest in the book. Now, there's a whole other aspect that would be a part of my platform to get that out there. But you also get get the podcast out there so that people know about it, yep. so then they generate the book. So there Which is leads us right back to online marketing. Right, exactly. <laughs> so there's that, and you need to know. And as Bob said, you've got to start early. One thing I don't want anyone to overlook is the book club. I love book clubs. It is yes. so much fun to do them. And either they have already bought your book or you're going to talk them into buying your book <laughs> there. And it is just a wonderful thing. It's one of the most uh, entertaining parts of being a writer, I think, is to go to book clubs. And it may sound, you know, it's like, well, Patterson probably doesn't do that. He probably doesn't. But I love doing it. I'm sure his publisher, though, puts, like, book club notes in the backs of his books, maybe. Yeah. A few of them. Book club notes? Well, oh, yeah, those questions, are questions, for example. Questions that can yeah. be asked at a book club. Right. And and things like, uh, what should you serve mm -hmm. <laughs> in order to enhance lemon the experience? Bars. Always exactly. lemon bars. That's good. I have that one way. So I just want to speak to the, uh, yes, if you, if you have um, an inkling and you enjoy public speaking and you can set up events for sure uh do that and one tip that i've uh, over over the years um a lot of people a lot of again novice authors think about the book signing mm -hmm. uh, which unless you're well known usually book signings are kind of aren't met nearly as well mm -hmm. as having free workshops especially like as we mentioned non with nonfiction. so if you have a free talk on the topic of your book um, give some value in the, in the talk. Yes, th those are great avenues. However, I should point out that it, there are so many different ways that authors succeed and sell books. My experience has been primarily online. And I've been online, and I have, I'm, I guess I'm becoming a veteran at this. My first book was published like 23 years ago. Uh, I first got on the internet in 1995, so it's like 21 years, I've seen all of those changes. Um, and so my whole approach, or my primary approach, while I have done some public speaking, has been primarily disseminating little chunks of my advice. In fact, I have, uh, I, 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 I think that I've probably, of all the things that I've published in text and audio and video formats over the years, I have probably freely given away over 75% of everything I've created in little bite-sized chunks that I share with people through blog posts, through articles, through podcasts, through, vi through video clips, and that's the way that I connect with people. Um, and and then a lot of my then I try to then I attempt to get them to, on my email list um, by creating an incentive to do so. And so that's been my primary way of reaching fans and selling books online. Uh, jumping in there, actually, before I go with my comments. I'm going to say one thing really quick, email lists. Um, sidebar, but very important if you are av if you are marketing. If you've got type of any kind of newsletter out there and so forth, it is a misconception that you want to go around just collecting people's email addresses and then suddenly signing them up for your newsletter or your email thing. Make sure that you have their permission to add them. Make sure they know that, that when they give you their email address that they're doing that. Why? Mm -hmm. And have a way to unsign. And have a way to mm -hmm. unsign. Why? Oh, it can be considered to be spam. You can get in trouble with spamming laws. Or, as a friend of mine, fortunately I've had a pleasant version of this, a person who got signed up can come up to you and go, why did you do that? I didn't want to sign up. Now this person was a lot more polite than what I just did. 
that when they got that <coughs> approached them. But make sure it's an opt in, not an opt out. Yes, make sure it's opt in, not opt out. Yes. Um, Same for Facebook groups. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, most certainly. Yeah, well, I won't go down that road. I just mm -hmm. had someone do that to me five times in a row within a half hour. Mm -hmm. And same group I kept opting out of. Go ahead. and then, I Okay. I wanted to uh, expand on the on online marketing because um, yeah. some of us, we have too many engagements in our day-to-day -day life that we can't travel right now. So we use the online marketing. And I want to say that Facebook parties, we can do <laughs> launch parties on Facebook. You can do mm -hmm. cover reveal parties. And you can do events where just a bunch of authors in the same genre get together and they decide to host mm -hmm. a multi-day party like I'm getting ready to do here soon with the damn Todd Erotica 5. Mm -hmm. And where it's going to be like a five-day party online where the authors are giving away prizes and we're getting in new readers and you create incentives for the people to show. We had to create samples of our books to give out. And it's going to be fun, and it's a wonderful tool for those that can't travel. But no, the thing to learn is to make sure you have other authors, and don't try to host a whole party just by yourself. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're an unknown author, you got to get those ones that are known on there, and let them promote their stuff, and then hopefully their fans will also be your fans. How how long are the, your samples, and what do you mean by your samples? Um, a sample book is where you take basically, and you might, if you're through a traditional publisher, you might have to get permission to do this. Mm -hmm. If you're indie like me, I reserve all rights. So I can take the first two chapters of each of my books and put it into a PDF file and put the book covers and give that to them for free so they can get a little sample. It gives them a little bit more than what they would for the, uh, like the Amazon look inside the book feature usually. So it's, is it, what, 10 to 20 pages, that kind of, what? Yeah, something like that. Actually, I was on I, iBooks, and I looked up a book, and it was for sale, and they actually gave me the first 50 pages. Wow. So, wow. I mean, it was like the first several chapters, and I decided, okay, if I'm still reading this till the end of the sample, I'll, if I'm still interested, I'll buy the book, and, you know, I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't have if they hadn't given me the first third for free. <laughs> we were tossing yeah. out a lot, a lot of different things. I'm going to let Kathleen go here before I do, but I wanted to say, after Kathleen, I'm going to let's bring it back in and talk about how to even begin. We've thrown out a lot of great ideas. I want to begin the marketing process. Go ahead. I wanted to go into the samples more because Bob has brought them up and Lee mm -hmm. has brought them up, uh, samples, sharing pieces of your work. Mm -hmm. And I hear that sharing pieces of your work um, invites a lot more people to purchase than does, you know, not doing that. So mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so, and, and you write fiction primarily, mm -hmm. right? And so it's, it's, you know, it's a little bit different. Uh, it's still similar. So I guess like, uh, basically with, fi well, obviously with, so with information, with hot, with, with nonfiction, you give away little bits of your expertise that, um, that actually gets people to either feel like they understand the topic better. It gives them a tool that they use that they can actually get, a, you know, they act on and they get a result. I mean, that's like, oh, wow, this person, or they, are they, are you, are they sample your writing to the point where they go, I like his style. I like that that tone, I like where he's coming from. So you, you deliver value in some way. Either they relate to you and your story, you give them a piece of information that they actually benefit from for free, and then they're more willing. So it's all about the relationship. Actually, when, when we get into what David just asked about how I, I, I would have some things to offer there. And so, but with fiction, like it was already mentioned, I, I pretty much can't add to that. You, if you can give them the early chapters of your book and you hook them and they're like, you, you end that sample with a cliffhanger, that they're going to increase the odds that uh, that they're going to purchase the book. Yeah. First chapters are a wonderful, wonderful thing to give away. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. depends on what your first chapter's like. Sometimes you need more than that. It just depends. No, even like, but you yeah. know, it is a whole thing in the industry. You put the cover on your first chapter. Uh, you create a little booklet. There's different places you can go online to do this, uh, and you just hand those out like uh, they're chocolates. And you know, <laughs> it's a way of generating business. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Benora, and then I'm going to go. Well, one of the ploys that Joanna Slad, who is kind of an expert at uh, online production of her stuff, is that she writes a short story. She doesn't actually give any away for free of her 
of her regular manuscripts, but she writes a short story which is related. It's a Kiki Lowenstein short story, usually. She sells it for 99 cents, and someday she sells it for free, you know, or gives it away for free. So that there is more than one way to work this, this entire deal. You don't have to give things away for free. Who was it that said, never give anything away for free? Wasn't that the guy we heard last uh -huh. week? His name is Reggie, yes? Yes. yes. But he would but give he away. gives away short stories Yes, as well. he does. He gives away <laughs> short stories. So maybe that's the answer to probably, give away short stories. You probably drop Reggie's full name since we've mentioned yes. it several yes. times. Ronald Van Stockton Jr. You can find his novels online. Yes, on Amazon. On Amazon. And he's an expert at hand selling his books. He certainly oh, yeah. is. He only gives <laughs> things for aggressive. free and guarantees him a sale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the reason your book's not selling, it's not hardback. <laughs> That's what he would say. That's what he would say. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a whole trick there. Yeah, you, right. All right. If, uh, so if you read the scribe, you can see a write-up on it in free the uh, online. March issue. Yes. And if you're a member of St. Louis Writers Guild, I think you can get the audio for that talk, yeah. can't you? Yeah, correct. You can join St. Louis Writers Guild even if you're not in the St. Louis area. We have members outside. But anyway. <laughs> and apparently now we're marketing St. Louis Writers Guild. <laughs> <laughs> why I'm backing away. We it's, are practicing what we are preaching. We mm -hmm. are marketing everything today. <laughs> so how do you start? How do we start? Well, let's start off with, first off, how if you're getting ready to write a book or you've written it and now you want to get promote whatever you've got to start off with at least have a marketing plan i don't mean sit down and write 20 some odd pages about what your marketing plan is mm -hmm. if you can great but part of that marketing plan is knowing what your markets are mm -hmm. how do you find them how do you find how do you find where your people are lee tossed out facebook but what if your market is young adult? Are they on Facebook? Or have they been going away from it like smelly um, onions going, oh, too right. much politics? So if, if we are going to start from the beginning, may I take a step back first and, eat it and just deal with something? Because I've been at this, my, my, my books that I started writing, you know, 20 odd years ago are on music marketing, but I, it's the same principles apply mm -hmm. to book promotion and I've, you know, I've been full time supporting myself as an author for the past 12 years. So I guess I've, uh, and I've just I've been immersed in this topic for a long time. So one of the first things I would advise authors to do is, first of all, how, what do you think about marketing? What is your relationship with it? Because there are a lot of people that either go from they're just being uncomfortable with it to actually thinking it's some sort of a necessary evil. You know, like I've got to do this this this, this ungodly thing <laughs> uh, to be able to, to market my books. And when you think of marketing in that way, you're not going to be eager to do it. You're going to it's going to always feel dirty and icky and to, to, to you and so first of all you I, I really recommend that you get over that and so um, and you've also heard this this philosophy about people when you're especially when you're an indie author you're wearing many hats there's the writer hat then there's the business hat and the marketing hat and all that but I think it's all the same hat I think when it comes to marketing and sales you can be every bit as creative as you are as a writer you bring that to the marketing it's not like well now I got to be in this business mode so me that really helped me when I because I don't think of it that that way marketing is an extension of the creative process and it's more about um, like when I do workshops, I go, how many people are uncomfortable with marketing? Like 80%. <laughs> like they're like looking at hands around the room right now going up. But I see how many of you feel like the idea of sharing your books with people who will enjoy them. Every hand goes up. Yeah. So marketing to me is just a strategic form of sharing. And so if you can embrace it in that way, just get on friendly terms with it. I think that helps you, gives you the, the foundation to do all this other stuff about strategy and tactics and all that. Um, and then in the early part of the, one of the early chapters of the book, I talk about this three, and I hope I don't mean to hog the conversation here, but I'm very passionate about this. There's like, I like to simplify things too, because marketing confuses a lot of writers. And so they like, they're feel burdened about, again, the, the idea of like writing a business plan. It's so complicated. So I love to just break things down and just keep it simple, stupid, you know? So really marketing and sales comes down to three basic activities. One is creating awareness. That's the whole getting your name out there. Before anybody can do anything, they have to know about you as an author. They've got to know about your books and be exposed to it in some way. I'll skip just to that step one. Step three, I want to jump to it's making the sales, generating income. It's selling books, making, you know, hopefully <laughs> earning back whatever you spent on it and hope, God forbid, make, make, make a profit. Then there's this middle part that a lot of authors overlook, and that's building relationships with fans 
and maybe people in the industry too, if you, you know, booksellers and librarians or whatever. But I always have focused, that's been my mantra, is focus on fans, readers, whatever you want to call them. And so that's the bridge between the awareness and the sale is people knowing who you are. And actually the examples we used earlier, the live events, Brad's doing his steampunk thing at the Science Center, Fedora's doing what, what your, your, like, histor or what's your, your topic again was historical Various characters. Various historical characters yeah, that so, I do. So I you, you in dress yeah. up and become so, yes. so whether they're successful in-person events or just like the marketing that I do, that the concept is the same as preach to the choir, you know, and so that comes with knowing, going directly to the, the people who, who are predisposed to enjoy your book. And I love that word predisposed because that means there's something about them that makes them more likely than not to enjoy what you have to offer and getting in front of them and establishing relationships, repeated exposures, you know, face to face conversations, Facebook exchanges, email, respond to email. There's a whole set of things, including the email list. Mm -hmm. And so it's creating awareness building the relationship over time, and then asking for the sale and not being embarrassed or afraid to do that. That's my kind of little <laughs> speech on that. Perfect. <laughs> and, know your, and know your markets. I mean, Bob just hit, Bob just hit a grand slam there. Um, <laughs> with the markets, though, I was talking about with the online, Facebook may not be the place that you want to promote your book. Primarily. I say that primarily because all every single... A lot of places are good Trish areas, locations. Brad, you, you write your steampunk and you promote it on LinkedIn. Why? Sometimes. Sometimes. And why is that? Because, uh, you know, LinkedIn's my professional page. So right. I'm aiming at other authors, publishers, and people like that. Uh, but we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. uh, each of the different platforms has uh, its niche audience. So I love Tumblr. Jen loves Tumblr. I love Tumblr. Tumblr forever. <laughs> Um, but, you know, and part of the reason I do that is because that's where a lot of my fans are. Uh, I have come to love Instagram. Go Instagram. Uh, partly through Author Life Month, I've met a ton of other uh, authors. And I've now found that there's a quite a robust steampunk community on Instagram. So, I, you know, I go where my, where my people are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I mentioned earlier, uh, when we were talking about blogs, I mentioned podcasts. Why, why would I talk about podcasts? Well... Right Pack Radio is on, is obviously a podcast. It's on Blog Talk Radio. Guess what? Blog Talk Radio promotes it out there. TuneIn picks it up. Multiple platforms pick up Right Pack Radio. In fact, I found out today, and if I looked at my phone's internet history, <laughs> I could see it, but I'm not going to right now. A Spanish focused podcast platform. Picks up Right Pack Radio. They don't translate it, to my knowledge, <laughs> but they have picked. They pick it up, and they pick up the same day. Because I saw our latest episodes I just posted last night on their thing today. If they do so, translate it, I so want to listen. Oh, I, do, <laughs> I, do, I want to find out what, what my voice really sounds saying? like for how my voice gets translated. Well, let's Spanish. be honest; it's probably the same woman just reciting everything that we say. It <laughs> could be. That would still be interesting. But anyway, there's that. If you do written blogs, written blogs, <laughs> written blogs, um, <laughs> sorry, Brad just distracted me with something. Yeah, Instagram, I Instagram this, so if you're on Instagram, check us out. <laughs> if, you do, <laughs> this. Right, if you do written blogs, your fans can share that out there to wherever they go, and they can share that with friends. Podcasts, you can listen to in your car, technically, you can download and listen. And po written blogs, you can read over your lunch hour or when you get time free time, like leaves between midnight and one o'clock when her kids are finally in bed <laughs> and she has no homework. Um, okay, so knowing your niche market, be it online or be it physically. Bob, you you do improv. I, I do, I, yeah. I teach it and perform it, yes. So do you ever uh, market your books at any of the improv classes or to the audience or to the class itself? I, I don't, although I'm working on an improv book that will be out in a couple of months, and I'm really excited. I'm kind of been keeping under wraps. It's, it's some, it's some, I'm co-writing it with someone who's well known in the improv world, but I have to. It, it I might not be under wraps anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I won't I, say who the uh, co-author, other uh, co-author is. Kick, Coming I soon, I kick um, the rock. <laughs> but, uh, and you ought to go out and hear Bob. I tell you, I will never forget the taxidermy blues. Oh, Bob. you still remember? <laughs> I remember it. Yes. Uh, yeah, it, it's a it's 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 a blast, and there are a lot of well, 
yeah, I, mean, I don't know how improv ter- uh, goes into marketing, but yeah, being again, it's about being creative. Uh, it's uh-huh. about um, and 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 expanding your. Um, Again, I think we have a lot of tunnel vision. Like we mentioned at the, at the top of the show, oh, you need to be in a bookstore. I need to get media exposure. I need to get book reviews. I need to be in libraries. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe not. Every author is to find their own way. Um, and, and that takes being open to possibilities and really playing with it. Like there's, like, there's another thing with marketing. Don't get too like, uh, worried about, I have to have it perfect. I need to learn all I can so I don't make any mistakes. You know, just try stuff and see yeah. what happens. Do more of what works and do less of what doesn't, you know. Very One thing guys. I'm going to turn this over to Kathleen, who's been patiently waiting, um, is real quick, who best knows your book? You. I know a lot of people want people to sell their books for them. Mm. Sometimes those sales go different because they don't really understand your understand your book. Mm-hmm. You know your book the best. Nope. Oh, did I take, I didn't take, did I take your words? No, it's a different direction. Oh, okay. No. Well, I was going to, I, I completely agree with what Bob was saying. Uh uh, in fact, it, if I could say anything is uh, some great advice to kind of, you know, put this all in, it's try one thing. Mm-hmm. If that works, try it again. If that doesn't work, try something else. Um, there are so many avenues to walk down that if you try and plan them out, you will go insane. Mm-hmm. Um, however, like, you'll never know what's going to hit, what's going to, you know, garner the most traction. One of the reasons why I, I love that I have an illustrator who's sitting six feet from me <laughs> is because I find that pictures... Of mm-hmm. what of you know my steampunk oh, yeah. creations travel further <laughs> through the internet than my words, my you know anything else that I've done, even my covers, um, which you know I have great covers and everything like that. But I find that that tease of here's the millitrain, it's a train with legs, it's you know scurrying through the African desert, that hooks people better than if I were to just say that if I had written that down or anything else. So try something, try a blog, try, you know, a bookstore, try getting in the libraries, try a, you know, blog mm-hmm. tour. All, all the kind different of platforms. Yeah. All the different platforms. Yeah, try everything and then see what works. I Do that again. Just thinking something Angie Fox said when she was on the show, um, when she was actually publishing her own books versus a publisher, she, all be, she then got all these metrics to what was effective and what wasn't. So when you have a publisher, even if the publisher does things for you, mm-hmm. which they won't do much, but they'll do something. Yeah. And, but you don't know how effective it is. But if you're doing it yourself, including paying for it yourself, unfortunately, yeah. you know what's worth money and what's not. So next time you can say, hmm, this cost me a bunch of money for an ad in this paper and it didn't bump my sales. But this thing, which is, you know, less, it's actually like, hmm, my sales went up. So mm-hmm. maybe I should, you know, just skip that one next time. So. And a perfect example of the graphics uh, and what you just said, too. Mm-hmm. I've, I've played with a lot of this stuff for Right Back Radio. We used to host events, announce the events by an event invitation on Facebook. I'd be lucky if we got, we've got the notice of about 30 some odd people, and maybe two people would say, yes, they're going to go to it. Um, I tried boosting. I paid. Didn't really do much. I got lots of views, nothing translated to the number of listens. Then Jennifer turned me into graphics. Today's graphic alone has already hit about four to five hundred views and I can see people going over to listen. The graphics that Brad talked about, it does go further and it's cheap. And these aren't uh, these aren't graphics. You know, he mentioned me, but I didn't draw art. No, these. no. These are things that he puts together from royalty free uh, Art and uh-huh. photo sites and using, what do you use, Microsoft Paint to build those things? Yeah, I just use paint. <laughs> I, I, so I'm it doesn't cheap. have to be <laughs> some extravagant thing. If you build anything, uh, you can use it to your advantage. And as a listener of this show, you should be able to find the graphics for this show. You know, <laughs> yes. Check out our Facebook page. Or yeah. <laughs> exactly. oh, I was going to say that, um, Bob, your experience in improv probably lends itself well to thinking about marketing in creative ways. Because... Mm-hmm. Um, well, and other than another thing, you have mentioned that you were teaching improv class at a school at the improv, uh, the free workshops that you do. But um, isn't there an improv rule that's like yes and you say yes to everything? Right. Can you explain yeah. That so, so 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 yeah. So so in imp- in improv, um, 
uh, yeah, so there's this, it's one of the rock bottom principles, no matter what game you're playing, it's yes and. And so whatever is, and, and, and improv is different than stand-up in that you're always co-creating a scene or a game with at least one other person on stage. And when your partner offers a piece of information, they call it an offer. That can be something that they say, something that they do. It's a piece of information. And so like if you walk into a scene and your partner says, Dad, come over here and help me put together this train or whatever. You know, you are the dad. Even if you previous prior to that you were thinking about playing a different role, as soon as they as you, as, as you're given a role or a piece of information, you enthusiastically accept it and then add to it. And so and so, yeah, saying yes to more things and and not um, and also the thing people always go, they always talk about like. Well, I tried to I I I I I tried to get a hold of this book reviewer and they never called me back. Okay, what else can you do? Uh -huh. <laughs> Instead of resisting that, just accept that's the way that is and maybe go knock on a different door, <laughs> the one that might open for, uh, for you. So that's one way of maybe mm -hmm. applying that. Another thing with improv is you often have two separate pieces of information that don't go together and you've got to find the overlap and the association. That's another, th another thing that you can, that's this creative thinking. You know that, and I always, I, I guess, since I've been studying marketing for so long, I sort of view the world through a marketing lens. So I'm like, what's the marketing lesson here? <laughs> if I go into a pizza shop and they're doing something to promote their pizzas, I go, how can I apply that to my books? You know, and so <laughs> you just, you just got to think that way, uh, yeah, to be able to benefit from it. Well, uh, I'm just going to say it's really faster than you, because it's quick. And that is everything that Bob just talked about with improv, and I want to reach over and hug Kathleen for bringing it up because I was hoping that's what she would do. Oh, cool. Um, is I can see applying straight to marketing because if you want to get into a bookstore, they want to know what, how are you going to drive traffic to their bookstore right. to pick up your book. If you're going to do a book signing at a bookstore, you can't sit back and just knit away. You've got to be able to interact. And I think your improv aspects to that, mm -hmm. the yes and, feeds into your ability to do that. Go ahead, Kathleen. Cool. Um, I was going to say, you you look through things through kind of a marketing point of view, like when mm -hmm. you go into a pizza place, how is this promotion they're doing something I could apply to my books? Correct, yeah. That's something writers do a lot, like when you're immersed in a world, you start seeing things through characters' eyes, you start looking at something and saying, how could I write about this? So yeah. it sounds like it's a, a similar thing to what writers already do. So. Is there a good way of helping us translate from the writer view to the marketing yeah. view? Yeah, and it's not something I do consciously anymore. I guess just because I've been immersed in this topic, like it's just like on my radar. It's just like when you buy a, a certain make and model of a car, you start seeing that, that car <laughs> every, 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 everywhere because it's in your awareness, you know. Uh -huh. And so I, since I write and speak and and talk to people about marketing, it's sort of a higher in my awareness. So I guess it's. Um, I mean, just tip, dip your toe into it. Read books on marketing. Um, get more and more familiar with it. Always be, and again, if you think about that, how can I share this with more people? And you'll slowly but surely start seeing opportunities that you maybe missed before. Um, I have an artistic interpretation of that same <laughs> sort of concept. I it was fun for me. I got a. Uh, I, I try to be very encouraging to other artists online. Mm -hmm. Especially people who have a lot of talent, I can see, but don't have a lot of uh, self-confidence about it. I'm, I want to be the one who says, no, keep drawing it, because you're doing a good job. And uh, therefore, I'm often around for people to have revelations. My friend online, a uh, name withheld, had a revelation <laughs> the other day uh, that she, she said, you've been telling me to break people, you know, figures down into basic shapes this whole time. You keep saying basic shapes, and the other day... I saw them. I saw the shapes. <laughs> I'd never seen the shapes before. And it's We're all uh, circle squares and triangles. Exactly. It's mm -hmm. like everyone is now made of shapes and that's what happens yeah, when you become aware. You become aware of marketing and marketing strategies. You start seeing them places the yeah. same way that my friend now could see all of her friends as elements of of triangles and circles and ovals. But the point is it took her a while to get there. Yeah, she was she worked really hard. And it took a bit of retraining before she could see the shapes. Well, two things. First, uh, to what we've been kind of talking about here, and um, the niche, I, I believe in finding your niche. And, and part of that is that your book has several. Um, you know, my book's about steampunk. That's one niche that I can run after, and there's mm. one little niche that I can go to. 
Uh, however, it's got trains in it, so I can go train enthusiasts. It's about Alexander the Great, so I market it that way. It's about the Victorian era, I market it that way. Um, it's for YA, so it's for kids. Uh, I love the grandparents set. <laughs> um, just because, you know, they're a great market to go to. And they, they love have to the buy, money. Yeah, they, they, they love to buy books for their grandkids. Mm -hmm. um, I have books for boys. You know, the, the book is aimed at boys and it's aimed at girls. Uh, so, you know, in that, there's, what, 10, 15 different avenues I can walk down to market my book. If you've got a dog in your book, I've got a little dragon. Um, <laughs> that's another avenue you can walk down, things of that nature. But I also want to talk about book events. Um, I love book signings. You know, we've been going around, we've been saying, you know, sometimes they're good, but I, I actually really love them. But there is kind of an art to a book signing. Um, one, you have to actually invite people. So, um, you know, ask 200 people and 50 will show up. Uh, maybe if you're lucky, 100 will show up. Um, have something there besides yourself. Uh, you know, uh, my friend Cole Gibson, uh, she had a whole line of books that were set here in St. Louis, but they had kind of a reincarnated samurai, and she actually got Geisha to come and show up at her events, wander around, talk to people. Uh, she even had samurai at one of her events. Uh, so, it, you know, and that was a spectacle. That was something to show up for, to see, beyond just getting her book, and people came in droves. Uh, feed them. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big proponent of feeding people. Uh, having good treats, fun stuff like that is always a, a plus. And then uh, I also recently learned that if you can put your book signing on a day when people are already going to be shopping, so <laughs> Iron yes. Zulu came out and uh, Emily Hall at Main Street uh, you know, was kind enough to give me Small Business Saturday to sell my books and have my book launch at. And one of the nicest things there is I sold a ton of books that day in part because it wasn't just people I knew coming in. Okay. I was then able to sell to the people who were already there shopping on Main Street and, you know, it kind of opened up this whole world of, hmm. Um, so if you can make Independent Bookstore Day, if you can, you know, tie it in with some day that people are going to already be coming to the bookstore, uh, that's a wonderful thing. Brent didn't say something. I'm, I'm going to talk. This is not. I'm going to talk about something else in just a second. Brent didn't say something, but he also gives away these little gear pins. Oh, my gear pins, yes. Always give something away for free, too. That's a good And one. he now has inadvertently created a, a secret society. A of secret society of people who come and show me their <laughs> lapels yeah. or their purses, the yeah. little gear they pins. They have his gear pins. I love it. So <laughs> it the gear pin that. society. Secret handshake. Exactly. Yes. It's, it is it's, a, it's a lapel oh, flip. And right oh, now, oh, we got one in the room. I like it. Oh, I'm jealous. Um, also, too, there's always something which I've never heard tossed out that I find to be a great site for information on marketing as well as running your business as a writer and guess what even if you're traditionally published and you've got an agent and you've got random penguin who's doing it penguin random house i know the real one yeah. random penguin i've never lost that we got two in the room <laughs> Sorry, you just had a friend out there. there you go they, they are representing you or getting your books out there one that is completely free to go to is the Small Business Administration, and you just go, to, just look it up. It's a government agency. It talks about all businesses, and you can steal ideas from other businesses on how to promote your stuff or how to organize yourself. Also, too, I will recommend reading the Entrepreneur magazine. It would cost if you get a subscription, but there's, they've got articles for free. If you look at those articles from one step aside, because it's no, remembering they're writing for all businesses, you are your own separate little business in a certain niche, it still applies. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, mine uh, ties into the book signing. Um, a very good piece of advice. If you are doing a book signing, make sure you don't sit behind your table the whole time quietly. Make sure you say hello to people. That's me you shake their hands. Get mm -hmm. them to come to your table. Shake their hands. Make that contact before you even mention anything about the book. And then the other thing, try to get them to hold your book. People are more likely to buy your book if they touch the book. That was one of the big things. Yes, for, Reggie said for that Reggie he can said. sell, he, he, half see, the time he'll it. sell a book yeah. if he gets it into their hands. And she missed the event, and, and she hasn't heard, heard the broadcast because I don't no, think it's No, I haven't, I haven't had time. Draw, right, it is dry and true. It, it, it is a thing. If they hold it, they are more likely to buy it. 
So what we're talking about here ties into that step two that I talked about earlier, building the relationship. And so definitely in person, I mean, you cannot beat the power of a face-to-face communication. So when they meet the author, they feel they have a connection with you. Um, that's very powerful. Yeah, and you can't sell 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 books. And so, but since I can't meet with all of my readers, and again, my mantra again is focus on fans. So how can I? What can you do to recreate that? in an online environment. It's a little bit difficult, but you can do it by, again, just just, uh, responding to your emails, uh, acknowledging comments when people leave them. Video is really powerful, too, if you can create little videos that show, you know, that they can see you and and as long as you're comfortable on on camera. So, um, yeah, do the best that you can to create, and also creating a community uh, around your topic, like Brad, you know, you, I know you're tied into the well. One, one of your niches is the steampunk. So, yes. so they're not only attracted to you, but they have a community where they talk to each other. And so, you know, you, I don't know. There's there's something powerful about that when people come to your events. This is probably more applies to bands because I've done a lot of music uh-huh. marketing when they come no. to a show, but they come to an event too. Yeah, I, I yeah. actively participate in steampunk talks. I blog about steampunk on a regular yeah. basis because it's not just about me. Yeah. It's about being a part of the larger community. Totally. So cool. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. One of the things that's come about in our current society, and we had an episode on this back in first season, about geeking into the mainstream. There are groups that have formed. There are people that love these genres so much that they will dress up in those genres or have parties in those genres, mystery parties, steampunk parties, science fiction parties, you name it. They're out there and they want to be all be uh, to hook up with your events or you to hook up with their events. Sorry, uh, yeah. Lee and I are kind of laughing because I know what Lee's thinking. <laughs> yeah, I know, I think I do too. Lee, <laughs> Lee has separate yes. kinds of parties. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not going there. But um, but the, 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 it still applies. You're attracting, okay. you're, your you're speaking. Niche. It's not my yeah. niche. You're singing to the choir. Yeah. 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 So draw a certain type yes. of person yeah. to yeah. party for yeah. a Lee's Lee's theme party. <laughs> but I, have, but I know people who do. Who, who, that, that is their niche. Well, I will and they say celebrate it. that recently the Mon- Minaj groups have picked up Goldie's Three Bears, and that book has been out for a while, and that book has seen the most sales that it has just because this little click on Facebook has realized that this was a multi partner, and uh-huh. boom. I, I had a question since science. we're talking about internet mm-hmm. marketing. Sure. How many ebooks do you sell and how many physical books do you sell on the internet specifically because obviously if you're selling in person mm-hmm. it would be more likely a physical book mm-hmm. yeah and it's what well, it's evolved over the uh, over the years i'm trying to think here i'm sure these days I've, i sell more ebooks overall um uh, however i still sell a fair amount and, and, and print books are more profitable because I'm pricing my ebooks in the two, you know, anywhere from ninety nine cents to three ninety nine. That was one of my follow up questions. Yeah. So, so it's it's been a little, yeah. And so, um, probably more ebooks now. Um, so I have like twelve, but some of them are in multiple formats. I have like twelve paperback books out, um, and another ten or something. They're all exclusively in ebook for, format. I will say, yeah, because since I've been at this, I feel like more and more like a dinosaur. I've seen a lot of the changes over the years, and I know that. Even like 10 years ago, I was selling most of my books from my own website. And I was barely even telling people about Amazon back then. But one of the things I've noticed, at least in my experience, is that as the Internet matures and people are more comfortable with Amazon and, and these other platforms, that I'm getting more fewer and fewer sales, unfortunately, from my own website and more and more from the established platform. So, again, do the yes and. I do resist that and go, oh, man, I don't make as much money. So you have to go with it. So now I'm sending people there and trying to see what I can do to leverage my presence on Amazon. And so, yeah, uh, but print books are still, are still selling That probably well. gives you a great mm-hmm. Amazon ranking, though, for yeah. books on marketing. So, yeah, and I do really, I've always got something in the, like in the top five or ten of oh. music business books category. Excellent. Pretty much always. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing. There are so many categories on marketing. Oh, not marketing. There are so many categories on Amazon. It's not actually all that hard to get to be number one in your little subcategory. Right. If you have well, a little subcategory. You call yourself a bestseller. <laughs> <laughs> what I find interesting is when you, let's say you buy a book in a certain section. Mm-hmm. And I have, I've bought books on marketing. And mm-hmm. guess whose books come up as suggestions? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I've already got the book. Yeah. So I'm like, I 
I could buy another copy, but you know. <laughs> and that's actually still. kind of an advanced strategy with yeah. Am with Am Amazon because any any given book can be in any in any. So I've been getting a lot more strategic um, with examining the the different. Cause you want to be honest about placing your book in the right category, right. but you want to get like in a really deep niche category um, that your book applies to, so that you show up. And sometimes. You just buy when, like when you go into if you're uploading your own ebooks through uh, KDP. What is that? Um, the uh, yeah, Kindle, um, Kindle Direct. Yeah, Kindle, Kindle Direct, Direct. Pu uh, Publishing. They have like generic bookstore categories, and and if and it doesn't always land in that niche that they have on the site, and so you can actually contact them and say, hey, I really want this. I've done this twice late, late, uh -huh. lately, getting it into a more advantageous subcategory, and they will manually place it there so that you're even mm -hmm. though. I may sell, it may be like 20,000 or 50,000 overall on Amazon, and it would be really deep in a, a more general category, but in this niche category, it's it could be in the top 20. Or I whatever. currently rock teen books about Africa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. yeah, that's because of your yeah. Iron Zulu. Yeah, because of Iron Zulu. Just, you know, that, that happens to be one of the niche markets yeah. that I'm in, and it do, does really well. But I would also say to leverage that same advice. This is reasons you want to talk to your local bookstores and your local booksellers, as well as your local librarians, because these are the people who are going to be advocating when somebody comes in and goes, I want to buy a book, I don't know what I want, or I'm looking for a book at the library or something like that, I don't know what to want. These people will remember you, they will promote your book to these people. Uh -huh. It's a wonderful resource to uh, mm -hmm. get your book out there. Oh, and if one person at the library turns you down, Try a different library. They're very, mm -hmm. it's, it's extremely variable, the receptiveness. Yeah, there's, uh, it seems like an unlikely source for a, a quote, but there's a, a Reverend Run is one of the original members of Run <laughs> DMC, and he's, he, he's very quotable. And I love, one of his, one of my favorite quotes of his is, I go where I'm celebrated, not where I'm tolerated. Which means, well, I keep knocking on a door that doesn't, I'd rather go where somebody's going to welcome me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and if one door doesn't open, go to the next one. You know, maybe come back to it later, but, you know, stop beating your head against something that's not working for you. And I never knew where that quote came from until now. Oh, I've yeah. heard it, I just never yeah. knew it. And also, one open door often leads to another open yeah. door. Yes. This uh, summer, for example, I'm doing a program on poisons at the St. Louis Central Library. Okay? You, nice. you got my full attention. No <laughs> poisons? Oh, the other mystery yeah, writer I love here. Yes. The NSA yes. will be sitting yes. in the audience. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Taking notes. Oh, they got me already. <laughs> All the research I do on it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so I'm doing that program on poisons. But also, I talked to her about mystery, and she said, well, another one of our branches has. As a mystery specialist so uh, perhaps you'd like to talk to her and so that door opened another door and that one I'm doing much more quickly and doing it with Claire Applewhite on April 9th. Very cool. Excellent. Yeah. So check that out. That reminds That's me of Dorothy up. Sayers novel a Peter Whimsey mystery where a mystery novelist is put on trial for the murder of her ex because he was poisoned and she was writing a book where the victim was poisoned. <laughs> so, we talked, actually, I've been looking and listening to where we've been going with this, and I think you've covered everything that's in the book that I brought with me, which is beyond the books, bookstore. Bob, you were talking about step two was this, step one was this. Is there any, other, any steps we've missed? No, I mean, you, you, I mean, those are the three basic steps. I, I think, again, creating awareness, building relationships with fans, and maybe people who can help you reach more of those fans, like bloggers, podcasters, mm -hmm. so on. And then at, and the third step, asking for the sale. So it's just a matter of drilling down into each one of those. There are specific strategies in each section. There's certain, you know, m there are many ways to just create awareness and make people aware of your books. There are events, publicity, um, flyers, yelling. <laughs> <laughs> from a rooftop, <laughs> you know. Uh, there are many ways to build the relationships, live events, many ways to, well, and we, and there's a whole, I've done whole workshops just on asking for the sale and positioning and describing it in terms of what's in it for them, um, making the offer, not being afraid to have a discount or a special offer for a limited, you know, those old infomercial things with that use scarcity, but, you know, I just, this special, are you either offer a discount or you actually offer some bonuses, like maybe a couple of your books for a special price, but have it ahead and end on a certain date to light a fire to mm -hmm. motivate people to spend now rather than yes. later. Having a, having that end date is a very yeah. tricky uh, 
mental thing for most people. And it, and it seems like it's like, again, like it's like cheesy or infomercial like, but it's really, I like, I love the psychology of marketing and the reason scarcity works because it's wired into our DNA because our species survived because it could sense that the winter was coming on or the, you know, the whatever. And so we would hoard things so we could survive. And so we're just sort of wired to, oh, you know, just like when there's a storm mm -hmm. in St. Louis, what does everybody do? Come yeah. in, you go to Schnooks and load <laughs> it's bread <laughs> yeah. and the milk and exactly. that. Yeah. Is this a one loaf store or a two loaf store? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And so it's that same that same thing. So you may as well, you know, uh, use it to get because you know what you as long as you know what you have is valuable and that they're going to benefit from it. Why not create an incentive for them to purchase it? Agreed. Yeah. Something we haven't talked about, and we're getting near the end, I'm sure. So I just want to throw it out there: um, is that we've talked about a lot of different avenues, and something I used to advocate to my writers when I was in publishing is that uh, there are even bigger markets to go after. Uh, there is national media, there is TV, there is radio. Um, and yes, you might not feel like your book is right for these. It might be, but here's the secret. They need content. Just as much as mm -hmm. you want to get onto this show, they need people to come on to their show. Uh, so if you think that your book or you know anything you, you're trying to market can fit the niche of that show, that TV show, that radio show, that national magazine, that newspaper, something like that, seek them out. Seek out the right person, that's the trick, uh, to contact. Um, but the point is, is that they need content just as much as you want to be there. So uh, don't think you're not worthy. And I wanted to... Ask Bob to elaborate. At one of your workshops, you also mentioned about rephrasing how you promote things to mm. tell people how it helps them, what's in it for them. Can you give a quick, real sure. quick view on and, yeah. how that works? And, th and thank you for, yeah, that's right. You were at the Creative Entrepreneur Summit, I think, back a few months ago, mm -hmm. where I went in to this, and it was really well re received, and the writers can totally relate to this, because I basically give examples of the same, like a, a description of the same book written in first person, second person, and third person. And so quite often marketers or, or people will just will, will write about their book in the first person. This is my book. I'm so happy. I'm so excited about it. I can't wait for you to read it. I'm really getting, you know, I'd so it's about you. Um, because the word, what, what's the first syllable in self-promotion is self, you know, so <laughs> I want to talk about me. Um, third person is that distant, this, you know, readers will be excited to read this book by John Smith or, or whoever, um, and that's just like a little distant, but you, having twice or three times as many you's references speaking directly to the readers, the way to write copy and descriptions of your, of your book, you'll, you know, you'll get this, that, and that, and you'll be able to do these things, or you'll be thrilled. You won't. You won't be able to put this book down as you turn the pages and read about so and so. Um, and so I'm just. You know, I'm getting some weird. I'm not getting some specific ex examples here. But yeah, write it in that second person, and and actually go through and circle the number of I we references versus the number of you references. There should be two or three as many more you references. You can always rephrase a sentence to to, to speak to the reader and what's in it for them. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about? Yep. Yeah. Cool. I thought that was excellent. And I'm going to give one cautionary note because we've talked about it on Right Back Radio is know your market. Know who you're selling to. Don't do what I'm about to do as an example. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like to eat at, you like to eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? Well, my character really likes peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and you really should read this book because it will tell you all the stuff that, and they, they go about this adventure. No. If, however, if this person was at a mystery conference or in line for a mystery book and you write a mystery story, maybe, maybe, who knows. Or one of my favorite book series, Cat Who's. It is, I'm looking at Fedora. Brown? The, the no, the no, 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 the Cat Who. The, the, the Cat the Who cat, series. The Cat Who, whatever. Uh, the Cat the, Who Sniffed Glue, the Cat Who Talked to Ghosts, the Cat Who Knew a Cardinal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got a cat? You've got a Siamese cat. Well, hey, did you ever read the series about... This cat has solved mysteries. Oh, anyway. and just a side note, don't read the last one. The cat who had uh, 60 whiskers isn't worth reading. It kind of destroys the series. Okay, <laughs> I didn't read that one, so that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, anyway. You just ruined it for him. Yes. No. <laughs> He's crushed. But the ultimate thing is, put yourself out there. I, I'm an introvert, believe it or not. Doing these podcasts and so forth, that's difficult, but do it. Nobody knows your stories like you do. 
Mm -hmm. Nobody has a passion for your stories mm -hmm. like you do. You want someone else to catch on fire with it with that passion and to crack open reading that book? Get out there, do it. Brad, perfect example at the first Friday. He stimulated so many kids out there. It was not <laughs> funny. I'm just sitting there like, yes, another kid's asking questions. Another kid's asking questions. And next thing I know, I see his Facebook pictures of these kids at his table buying his book. Yeah, there were actually several of them who came up who'd ask questions and wanted to then buy the book and ask more questions. <laughs> and I, I actually stay, stuck around uh, until they forced me to go introduce the movie. Pretty Just, much, yeah. yeah. I was there when yeah. you were about to go in. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, answering questions, because I don't mind, and that's, you know, I love talking about steampunk, so I'll talk about steampunk anytime. Yeah. Any final thoughts for today on marketing that we didn't cover? Mm -hmm. Well, um, can we end on just the reframing? Yes. Uh, the marketing is icky. How do you reframe that? How should <laughs> we be thinking it's just, about well, it? So most people uh, will not resist the idea of, so, so ask yourself, would I, do I like the idea of sharing my books with people who would really enjoy them? It's a simple question. The answer is yes. So you like to share your words with people that will enjoy them. So marketing is a strategic form of sharing. If you keep it focused on the relationship, my mantra, I'll say it again, focus on fans, building relationships with them. Your career as an author, your legacy, your impact on the world will be determined by the number of people uh, who are aware of you, resonate with you, and are eager to not only purchase your books, but uh, rave about them and spread the word to other people. So love those people. Put a lot of attention on that relationship and delivering value. Last thought? Yeah, um, and this is something that Bob said during the workshop. He said, what is more selfish, keeping oh. it to yourself or sharing it? <laughs> mm -hmm. And with that, we're going to end this episode of Right Pack Radio. Tune in next week for yet another interesting topic in the writing industry. Have a great week writing. Theme songs for Right Pack Radio were written and performed by Meredith Tate. All copyrights remain with her. Right Pack Radio would like to thank STL Books for allowing us to record in their office. STL Books is an online bookstore specializing in new and used high-quality literature, children's books, and books written by or about St. Louis. Please visit them online at www.stlbooks.com or find their store on the Amazon.com website.